Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss the ABCs of trauma. ABCDE is a mnemonic to help you assess and treat the condition of a trauma patient. It helps to prioritize to treat first what kills first. And no matter whatever the cause and how severe the trauma is, the patient is approached in a systematic way, starting with primary survey and followed by secondary survey. Primary survey is used to identify life-threatening injuries and initiate resuscitation. It includes ABCDE assessment whereas secondary survey is used for a detailed head-to-toe examination. Let's start with the primary survey. A is for airway, B for breathing, C for circulation, D for disability, and E for exposure. The ABCs are evaluated in the same order without being deviated, and the problem discovered in any of the steps must be addressed immediately before moving on to the next step. Some books also add a small C before A, which is for control of massive external hemorrhage. And after that comes the airway assessment with cervical spine control. In severe cases of trauma, cervical spine injury is also suspected. So to prevent further damage to the spine, a cervical collar is placed. Next, we have to make sure that the patient has a patent airway because loss of airway can result in death in less than 3 minutes. An easy way to determine whether the airway is patent or not is to talk to the patient. And if the patient is speaking normally, then there is generally no need for immediate airway management. But what if the patient is unconscious? Then a head tilt chin lift maneuver is used to prevent the tongue from blocking the airway. And if C-spine injury is suspected, then jaw thrust maneuver is used because head tilt chin lift maneuver can cause more damage to the spine. Other ways of opening an obstructed airway include using nasal cannula, face mask or an airway adjunct like nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal airway. Now if none of these methods work or the airway has been compromised or the GCS score of the patient is 8 or there is a severe closed head injury then endotracheal intubation would become necessary. This is also known as definitive airway. But then if for any reason the patient cannot be intubated like in the setting of significant maxillofacial trauma then cricothyroidotomy should be performed which is known as surgical airway. After airway management is done, next step is to look, listen and feel to see if the patient is breathing normally. This can be done by inspection, auscultation and palpation. Inspection involves looking for tracheal deviation, accessory muscle use, retractions, absence of spontaneous breathing, paradoxical chest wall movements. Auscultation for abnormal breath sounds and palpation is done to feel deviated trachea, broken ribs and injuries to the chest. This physical exam will help you identify life-threatening injuries like absent breath sounds with tracheal shift, hypotension and distended neck veins could indicate tension pneumothorax. Absent or diminished breath sounds with hemodynamic instability could indicate hemothorax. Paradoxical chest wall movements indicate flail chest and open pneumothorax is indicated by an open chest wound. Once A and B are evaluated and all issues are addressed in appropriate manner, you may proceed to circulation. It is assessed by looking for signs of poor perfusion like cool, moist extremities, delayed capillary refill, low blood pressure, tachypnea, tachycardia, absent pulses. If these signs are present, this means that the patient is hypovolemic due to ongoing hemorrhage or blood loss. In this case, immediate crystalloid infusion should be given by two large bore IV catheters to maintain blood pressure while waiting for blood and blood products to arrive so blood infusion can be given. If hypotension is with distended neck veins and muffled heart sounds, then cardiac tamponade should be suspected and it should be addressed. A pelvic binder should be applied to all suspected pelvic fracture and a splint for femur fracture. After the A, B and C are complete, the patient is evaluated for D, disability, by a brief neurological examination to calculate the Glasgow Coma Scale score. It evaluates eye opening on the scale of 1 to 4, verbal response 1 to 5 and motor response 1 to 6. The maximum score is 15 and minimum is 3. Patients with a score 3 to 8 have severe disability, 9 to 12 have moderate disability and 13 to 15 have mild disability. And remember all the patients with GCS score 8 or less than 8 require intubation. Now the final component of primary survey is E exposure. The patient is completely undressed to perform complete assessment. The patient is turned by log rolling in case of suspected spinal cord injury and the patient is examined for any hidden injuries. Once this is done, always cover the patient with warm blankets as trauma patients are usually hypothermic. And vital signs should be monitored at the end of the ABCDE approach. After the primary survey, secondary survey begins in which you obtain an ample history. This is a mnemonic for allergies, medications, past medical history, last oral intake and events and environmental factors related to the injury. 
then a focus physical exam is conducted from head to toe to detect other significant but not immediately life threatening injuries major trauma patients often require a chest x ray pelvis x ray and an ultrasound of the abdomen called efast extended focused assessment with sonogram for trauma this will allow identification of blood loss from the most common sources after the detailed examination all injuries should be appropriately managed in the correct priority order this was everything about the abc's of trauma thank you for watching